back ghost schools and things that go bump in the night. You know, ever since I was a kid, I had a weird desire to join the circus. A carnival. I didn't even really care what it was. I didn't really have anything special I could do. But I always liked animals. I'm sure I could have figured something out. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like that's a dream that's going to come true. But whenever I see a sign for a circus or carnival, my heart does a little pitter-patter and I just feel a little happier. That is, until I got this story sent to me. Have you ever heard of the Ophelia family's traveling circus? Neither had I. But, why don't you have a seat, relax, and I'll tell you all about it. This is Wanted, assistant manager for the Ophelia family's traveling circus. I stopped scrolling and stared at the job listing on my computer screen. I'd spent the better half of the last month searching for a new job after the bank I worked for laid off most of their employees. All of the typical jobs were posted, dishwasher, cashier, server, housekeeper, but this piqued my interest. How cool would it be to tell my friends that I was the assistant manager of a traveling circus? I'd get to travel, have fun, and would be making great money. I'm already interested, but let's see what the job requirements entail. Strong interpersonal skills? Check! Ability to manage a large team efficiently? Definitely. Check! Must have a strong stomach. Probably for all the elephant crap or something. Check! Must have experience dealing with death or loss? Why? I stopped reading and looked down at my cat who was rubbing gingerly against my leg. I want to make a good life for us. I thought to myself. When I looked back at my computer, a confirmation screen appeared with my resume already attached. I must have hit apply accidentally. Well, let's go for it. I hit confirm and immediately received an email that my application was successfully admitted. Within the hour, my phone buzzed from an unknown caller. I answered the call and an automated message came across the line. Thank you for choosing to be a part of the Ophelia Family's Traveling Circus. Please take down the following address and arrive promptly at noon on 26 February 2020. Goodbye! I quickly scribbled down the address on a piece of paper, beaming with joy that I had a real shot at getting this job. Things are finally starting to look up. I spent the next two weeks doing plenty of research to learn as much about circus culture as I could. I wanted to make a good impression and ensure these people that I am the right fit for the job. So far, I've learned there are eight variations of tightrope walking. The first circus opened in 1768, and circus performers think that eating peanuts and whistling backstage is bad luck. Alright, well I know what I won't be doing then. I even went as far as buying a new colorful outfit to make myself stand out against the competition. I also searched for the Ophelia Family Traveling Circus, but I couldn't find a link to their website or any articles about the circus. It must just be starting up. That works out perfectly. I get my foot in the door early, and then we become a huge success with my name contributing to it. The evening before my interview, 
I received another automated message from another unknown caller. Thank you for choosing to be a part of the Ophelia family's traveling circus. We encourage you to bring a week's worth of clothing and personal hygiene items. Please do not bring any electronics as this could damage the equipment used for our shows. We look forward to meeting you, Bryn. Goodbye. Wow, they even personalized their automated messages. I love this job already and I haven't even been given the position. Even if I don't get the job, they absolutely have my business just for their showmanship. I brushed my teeth and crawled into bed, excited as a kid on Christmas Eve. The morning of my interview, after having packed three bags, I received yet another automated message from an unknown caller. Thank you for choosing to be a part of the Ophelia family's traveling circus. We would like to give you an opportunity to cancel your interview. Press 1 to decline the interview. Press 2 to confirm. This made me laugh to myself, and I promptly pressed 2 to confirm that I would be there. Thank you for confirming your interview. We will see you at the previously provided address at noon. Goodbye. It's nice to see that they give an option for people to cancel the interview. Especially for people with interview jitters. Not me, though. I am more than ready to take on this job. I wonder how many other candidates chickened out at the last minute. I give my cat a good chin scratching, grabbed my keys, and headed out to the car. I put the address they provided in my GPS, and a ping of anxiety ran through my system. This address is five minutes away? How? I thought to myself. I racked my brain to try to think of any places around my home that could potentially be the headquarters of a traveling circus. The only place in my area that could possibly be used would be the preschool that closed down after having a wiring issue caused by the back part of the building to burn down. But I doubt a business as cool as this one would use a burned up building. After two rights, a left, then another right, I slowly pulled into the parking lot of... Did you guess? That's right! The burnt down preschool. I should be a psychic. Maybe that could be my act. Not only do I assist it manage the circus, but I'm also one of the acts. I'm multi-talented. I should have put that in my resume. As I turned off my car, my phone buzzed and unknown caller appeared once more on my screen. Thank you for choosing to be a part of the Ophelia family's traveling circus. We would like to give you an opportunity to cancel your interview. Press 1 to decline the interview and press 2 to confirm. This again? They must really want to make sure I'm interested in the job. I press 2 and the automated system continued. Your interview has been confirmed. As a reminder, please turn off all electronic devices and leave them outside the building. We ask that once you enter the building, please follow the north hallway until you reach the room labeled Mars Locus. We look forward to making you a part of 
the Ophelia family's traveling circus. Goodbye. My interview is going to be in a bug-themed room. As long as there weren't any spiders on the walls, I'll be good. I put my phone on vibrate, shoved it into my pocket, and made my way to the entrance of the building. The doors had black paint covering them, making it impossible to see inside beforehand. I took a deep breath, put on my best smile, pulled the doors open, and made my way into the building. I was immediately met with a wall that held a massive picture of an expressionless clown. The hairs on the back of my neck raised as I stared at the ungodly picture. I looked to my left and was met with a corridor labeled North, the one to my right labeled South. I started to make my way to the right corner and noticed the expressionless clown's face had changed. It now looked angry, evil. It grimaced at me as if it could see me. As I took a few steps to the right, its eyes followed my movement. This must be like a fun house or something. Very fitting for a traveling circus headquarter. As I entered the corridor, a layer of fog slowly formed on the floor. The walls were painted into letters and white spirals with lights flashing rapidly against them. I was immediately disoriented and grabbed onto the wall to balance myself. Off-key circus music began to blare through the hallway as I slowly made my way towards the locust room. A disheveled-looking clown on a unicycle blared a foghorn into my ear as it blew past me, making an abrupt left turn into the wall and disappearing. This place is amazing! It's such an immersive experience! I finally made my way to the end of the corridor which felt like it had been turned completely upside down. An old sign above the door read, Morse Locust 2. Must be Latin for bugs. I knocked twice on the old burnt door and waited. Slowly, it opened and I was met with pure darkness. I pushed the door completely open and waited for a moment. After a few minutes of waiting, I decided to enter the dark room. It must be a part of their interview process to get the full effect of what I'll be working with. The doors abruptly shut behind me, and I stood in the pitch black and silent room. I called out to see if anyone would answer. The room echoed as if it were much larger than it appeared. Suddenly, a spotlight appeared over what looked like another clown, standing on a pedestal towards the far left side of the room. Strings ran from the back of the clown up to the ceiling like a marionette, but its stance made it look almost robotic. Another spotlight appeared over a second clown a few paces behind the first, then another, then another. Both sides of the room were lined with disheveled-looking clowns of various shapes and sizes, all with strings connected from their backs to the ceiling. I was amazed at how lifelike each of them looked. I made my way to the left to get a better look at the one closest to me. This was such a fun experience. I stood before the first one, dressed in 1940s clown attire. Each looked to be from a different decade. I noticed a liquid dripping off of the clown's overly exaggerated in size Oxford shoes. It must be some kind of oil that lets them move swiftly. A strong, copper smell permeated the air as I inched closer to the clown, taking in the incredible details of the clothing and face. Suddenly, my heart sank into my stomach. I... I knew this clown. I knew this person. My boyfriend stood lifeless before me, suspended from the ceiling on wires that ripped through his spine. Panic began to set in. I started walking backwards towards the opposite wall and slammed into another clown. I spun around and was faced with my best friend, my beautiful, lifeless best friend, dressed in oversized 1970s clown attire, suspended from the ceiling. My head began to spin. I knew everyone in the room. Her spotlight suddenly disappeared, and one by one the others did as well. 
Fueled by anxiety and fear, I began to feel my way around the room to find the door I came in through. I finally hit the doorknob and pulled as hard as I could, but the door wouldn't budge. I'm trapped. Whispers began to fill the void behind me of indistinguishable words that raided my mind to the point I wanted to scream. I felt my phone begin to vibrate in my pocket. Yes! I have my phone! I totally forgot I put it in my pocket. I can call for help! I quickly pulled my phone out of my pocket, feeling relieved for the first time since I entered the building. But that quickly diminished as unknown caller flashed onto my screen. I declined the call, too afraid to answer. The whispers suddenly stopped. It was as if they were fueled by the vibrations of my phone, and declining the call turned them off. Wait, didn't that automated message say something about phones? What was it? My phone began to vibrate in my hand, and the whispers came crashing down on me, filling every inch of the room with terrifying chatter. Shoes began to shuffle behind me in rapid movements, making it difficult to determine who or what was moving. Unknown caller flashed again, and this time I decided to answer. I opened my eyes in time to catch the message light up on my phone that I had a missed call. I stretched and sat up in my chair. Did I fall asleep? Was that all a dream? I shook my mouse to wake up my computer and was met with a job listing for an assistant manager at the Ophelia family's traveling circus. I picked up my phone and went to my voicemail. My stomach sank as I listened to the message. Thank you for choosing to be a part of the Ophelia family's traveling circus. We thank you for not using electronic devices during our show. One of our esteemed staff members will be in touch with you to discuss how you'll play a vital role in our production. We look forward to working with you. Goodbye. Well, ghosts, ghouls, and things that go bump in the night think that's why you need to make sure you follow directions when you go to job interviews. Otherwise, who knows where you'll end up. And that's our story for this week. Have you ever had an encounter like this? Or do you have a story of your own to tell? If so, email me at hauntedhorrorstorian at gmail.com or if you want to meet some like-minded ghosts, ghouls, and things that go bump in the night check us out on Facebook at Haunted Horror Storian Podcast and join our group the Haunted Horror Storians Ghosts, Ghouls, and Things That Go Bump don't blame me, blame Facebook I couldn't make it any longer but until next time my wonderful, wonderful listeners. Stay spooky, and remember, sometimes it's more than just a story.